Hey everybody, Casey Ferris here. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Today we are looking at the very basics, and I'm talking the basics, of the brand new Fusion tab inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. This just came out a couple days ago. A lot of you have been asking me for some type of Fusion Basics tutorial, so here it is. Here it is. I'm not gonna go over much else in Resolve in this video other than the things that relate to Fusion. If you're looking for some new features in DaVinci Resolve, some little bit about Fusion, a little bit about the color, check out this video right here. So let's get started. This is the default Fusion interface in the Fusion tab, and it's organized a lot like Resolve is usually organized. There's buttons up here that open different panels, different parts of the UI. The most familiar ones are gonna be the clips, which is just the clips timeline, just like in the color tab, the effects library, and the media pool, just like the other tabs. And we can toggle our node graph. Over here we have our inspector. This is pretty much any type of properties for whatever you have selected. Metadata for all the nerdy things. We have a spline graph for adjusting keyframes and animation. And then we have our keyframes view, which is a layered timeline. So if you have different things happening in time, you can adjust how that all works. Keyframes are more about adjusting things in time where spline is more like the interpolation of those things. And up here we have two viewers, but the main area that you're gonna be working in here is the node graph. If you're looking at this and you're saying, goodness me, what, what is even happening? You're not alone because nodes can be really scary, but think of it this way. It's more like a flow chart of what's happening to your image. If you're familiar with layers in Photoshop or After Effects or pretty much any NLE, you're used to putting things on top of other things in the timeline and then adjusting the properties of those things, right? Nodes is kind of like a visual map of everything that's happening to your image. And the position up and down or left and right really doesn't matter a whole lot for what's actually going on. It's the content of the nodes that are in the graph here. But generally you'll want your nodes to flow from left to right. And the two nodes that appear in any shot inside of Fusion are the media in and media out. This is your starting image and ending image. Okay, so if you just think about that, everything that you wanna do is gonna happen in between these things. For instance, if I wanna do something simple like blur this shot, I can go up to my effects library and go to blur and grab this blur node and drag it down in between these two nodes. Let it go and voila, nothing happens at all. The reason for that is because I haven't adjusted the properties of this node, which happens in the inspector. So here on blur size, I can boost that up and that will start to blur things. Now what's interesting is the nodes only work if they're connected. So if I disconnect this blur node, we won't see anything. That's because this media in is not connected to the media out at all. So I can disconnect it from the blur node and I can just connect it to the media out again. And there we're just bypassing this blur node. So something that's kind of cool is you can get stuff ready before you even hook it up or kind of have stuff laying on the table, like ready to use. If you kind of think about this as like a big work table, that, that also helps me a little bit. So what I'll do is hook this up into the blur. I'll delete this line and hook my blur into media out. So it's a little graph. We take our starting image, we blur it, and then we render it, okay? Now, a couple things about how nodes work related to these viewers. We have two viewers here, and if you're familiar with editing programs, you're used to like a source viewer and a timeline viewer, or you know an effects viewer and a program viewer. But this viewer isn't necessarily what the end result will be. These viewers act the exact same way. You could have your final image over here like this, and your starting image over here like this. The reason why these can be switched is because this is just viewer one and viewer two. And depending on what node you have selected, and what viewer you have selected in that node, that's what will appear in these viewers. And I can see a little preview of what viewer is being used by these two little dots down here. I can click the dots and load this node into either viewer, right? So now I'm in both viewers, now I'm in the right viewer, now I'm in the left viewer. I can also do a shortcut there by just hitting one or two on my keyboard and that toggles which viewer happens, right? What I like to do is keep my media out in my second viewer and view my other nodes in my first viewer. So this is my first node, this is my last node. So if I were to do something like make a text node, I can drag it from this little button bar here. These are just, these are the same things as the effects in the effects library. They're just here because they're the most common things that you use, so they're easy to grab. And now see, I can select my text node and hit one, and that's gonna bring up my text controls. So I can say, hey there, 
And I can see that in viewer one. I could also switch to viewer two, but that isn't necessarily what is rendered. This is what's rendered. So for basic compositing, how do we put this over this? We don't have layers. I can't just put it over like that. The answer is we need to use a merge node. Now a merge node is basically put something on top of something else. And you can get to a merge node by this little button right here. I'll just drag that in. And when you have this node selected, some stuff pops up in the inspector, ways that you can adjust how these images are put together. You can transform them, flip them, do all those crazy things right inside of this merge node. So I'm gonna break this connection between my blur and my media out, and I'm gonna hook my blur into my merge node. But the problem is there's all these little triangles around here and where, which one do I connect it to? After a while, you'll learn what each of these are. But for right now, if you grab this little square, which is the output of the node with a right click and then drop it on that next node, it will ask you what you wanna do. So I wanna set this as the background, boom. Same thing with text. I'm gonna grab that with my right click and put it on as the foreground. And oh my goodness, nothing happens. That's because we haven't connected this to media out. So I'm just gonna drag that onto media out. And there we go, those are composited. So now we have a flow chart of, we take our original image, we blur it, and we put it under this text and then render it out. So that's some really basic stuff on how the nodes work and how Fusion works in general. It's all about connecting the nodes and connecting the different effects to get the desired result. So let's look at a nice example of this. I'm gonna open up my clips and switch over to something I worked on this morning. This is a composite of a screen replacement for a little cell phone thing. And let's take a look at what's happening here. First of all, we're starting with our original footage, which is like this on the green screen. That's going into something called Delta Keyer One, which is just an effect from the effects library under matte called Delta Keyer. That's really good for keying out green screen things. And then it's being merged with something, okay? Here's the merge node, and then that's being rendered. So what it's being merged with is this right here, which is this phone screenshot, and then we're cropping it, and then we're flipping it, and then I track this screen with an effect called Planar Tracker, and I'll show you how that works real quick. Just as an example, here's just the raw footage. I'm gonna to go to my effects library, go to tools, to tracking, to planar tracker, and I'm gonna drag that in between my media in and my media out. I'm gonna switch my tracker to hybrid point slash area and draw a little shape around this. I happen to know that her hand comes in and will mess up the track. So I'm gonna make like a little L shape. I'm not gonna track all of that right now, but basically, I'll size up my interface a little bit, but basically once that tracks all the way through. I could switch my operation mode to corner pin like this. And I can load an image to be corner pinned over this footage. Now, how you do that in Resolve is kind of weird. There might be another way to do this that's a little easier, but the way I found is you take the foreground and you just put it over the background in the edit tab, select them both and right click and go to new fusion clip. What that's gonna do is load both of these images together in Fusion so that you can composite them on top of one another. So let's just set these nodes back to where my other shot was. I have my footage tracked and corner pinned. I can take my phone screen layer and put it on the planar tracker as corner pin one. And that's gonna composite that on top of my footage as a corner pinned layer. The only problem is that this isn't scaled right. So what I can do is crop it and transform it and adjust it to fit the phone. And now it's looking pretty good. There's just one problem that her fingers are going under the screen. So what we need to do is put this footage back on top of it and key out that green. The cool thing about nodes is that I can use this same node to be a layer on top of itself. To put this footage on top of all these things I've done, I'm gonna need a merge. I'll connect everything to the background and I can connect this original image to the foreground of my merge layer and it shows up on top of it. So now all I have to do is key out that green. I can do that by using my Delta Keyer. I'll drop that on this line. And for my background color, I'll pick screen color. We'll do something like this, hit OK, and there goes my screen, and there's my composite. So let's review a little bit. Nodes are basically a flow chart of what's happening to your image. All of your effects and fancy things that you do go in between your media in and your media out nodes. 
You can pick what's shown in each of these viewers by hitting one or two with, with a node selected. And the image that's gonna be rendered is whatever goes into this media out node. Whatever node you have selected has properties which show up here in the inspector. And you pretty much build your composite and how things relate just by connecting the nodes with these little lines. So I know that's not every single thing that Fusion can do, but it should give you enough information to open it up, start playing around, and it is really fun kind of trying to solve problems and uh, get things to happen just by connecting the nodes and adding different effects and linking them up. So hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. For more DaVinci Resolve tutorials, Fusion tutorials, and things related to post-production, make sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that little notification bell right by the subscribe button so that you will know the minute I post a new video. And believe me, you're gonna wanna know because uh, the early bird gets the worm and we got some cool stuff coming out very soon. My name again is Casey Ferris. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Go freaking buy yourself a puppy. You deserve it.